McDonald's is a hugely different company today than it was not too many years ago. They used to be way more child-oriented, with bright, playful stores and a cast of colorful characters not limited to Ronald. As far back as the 1960s, at the command of Ray Kroc, McDonald's began TV advertising and trying to pull in younger crowds. They really hit gold in the 70s with McDonald Land, giving us many of the chain's most famous mascots. They opened playgrounds, rolled out Happy Meals, and released waves of proprietary toys and merchandise. It paid off. By the 80s, every kid was begging their parents to go to McDonald's. These corporate masterminds had found a way to make a chain of burger restaurants as appealing as a candy store. The McDonald's Corporation had ties in almost everything American children consumed, where and what they ate, the toys they played with, and what they watched on TV. How could they diversify further? Where could they take the largest restaurant chain in the country next? Retail, of course. It had been done before, Disney being a big example, slapping Mickey and his friends on almost anything wearable or otherwise, culminating in the Disney store. Another was Coca-Cola, McDonald's longtime partner. Themselves in a similar business, Coke plastered their logo all over shirts, jackets, pants, socks, underwear for God's sake. But they didn't stop there. They had furniture, posters, and even clocks. No merchandising was off the table for the world's most recognizable brand. They even owned Santa Claus. Pepsi followed suit. Anyone else who could make a quick buck in merchandising did. Maybe McDonald's apparel wasn't quite as crazy as it sounded. The main issue was how to sell the clothes. The restaurants wouldn't work. It was already busy enough, and pairing a supersized meal with some Big Mac underpants was a no-go. Opening stores like Disney would be too expensive. They had to find a partner to sell the stuff. Who else but the biggest retailer, Sears. They had a long history of introducing exclusive lines based around intellectual properties, again, Disney being one of their biggest partners. In the mid-80s, McDonald's and Sears entered a licensing agreement to create name-branded children's wear for those under the age of 10. The clothing would run the gambit from tops to bottoms, socks, shoes, jackets, sportswears, and pajamas, all boasting bright primary colors, which tied back into the McDonald's branding, many outfits being colored like ketchup and mustard. In 1987, Mick Kids was introduced, exclusively at Sears. It was offered in their catalogs and in nearly all of their over 800 stores. They opened a miniature version of McDonald Land as a boutique where this new, condiment-colored clothing would be sold. It seemed the burger magic worked well enough, and McKids was a success. Another win for McDonald's marketing and another strong IP for Sears. During the late 80s, Sears was kind of reinventing its image. Since entering retail from the catalog business in the 1920s, they'd always been the big store that had it all. But now, they were getting into specialty retail, divulging the main stores of excess product lines. Mick Kids was successful enough that Sears decided to spin the brand into its own freestanding store. In August 88, the first standalone Mick Kids store was opened in Chicago's Century City Shopping Center. The store had new clothing, shoes, accessories, toys, games, books, and other novelties. Sears projected 40 more stores by 1990. Most were mall-based and more upscale than the typical Sears department. The stores were a lot of fun, with all sorts of cool features to attract kids and their families. They neared 50 stores by 1991 and planned to have 300 opened in the next five years. Mick Kids had all the makings of a success story, but a few hurdles stood in the way. Sears was betting against big players like Toys R Us and the Children's Place. Mick Kids had a business model very close to Kids R Us, which did good business in well over 100 stores. Another bad sign was the state of the toy retail industry. In response to the 1990 recession, the industry was thinning out. On top of that, Walmart dethroned Sears as the top retailer in the United States and was taking as many customers as they could with their discounted clothing and toys. Sears must have seen the writing on the wall. 
Their lagging sales became a severe problem, and decided to put the experiment to an end, chalking the whole thing up as unsuccessful R&D. The Mick Kids brand continued to be sold at Sears until 1997, when it jumped ships to Walmart, where it stayed until 2003. The next year, McDonald's took the Mick Kids brand worldwide with all sorts of media ventures, Mick Kids videos, books, and music. In addition, 15 new Mick Kids stores were opened in China. The chain wouldn't see a comeback in America, partly, I'm sure, to the backlash at fast food from the public at the time. The last thing a more health-conscious country wanted to see was their kids wearing burger designer clothes. And that just about brings us to today, with a modern McDonald's, no longer the largest fast food chain, that doesn't single out kids as much as they used to. I can't imagine McKids happening today, and we'll probably never see something like it again. Oh, you gotta be kidding me.